And so Prometheus, uh, you probably all know that uh, it's an open source monitoring solution. So we store metrics and in the data model of Prometheus, lab labels have a big place. So you don't have just uh, a bunch of data without any indexing or anything like that. No, instead of that, all the data is using uh, labels. And in this case, uh, Prometheus is scraping targets. It means that he knows what it has to scrape and he will go to the targets and um, fetch the metrics from the target. So every target in Prometheus has a bunch of labels. Uh, there are a bunch of labels which we get almost all the time, like instance and job, because they are the labels that are added by Prometheus, but you can have a lot more different labels, like you can know uh, the data center, you can have the region, well, you can have any label that you want because uh, Prometheus does not come with any opinions at all so you just can decide what's the best uh, label that will suit your targets. So Prometheus is based on metrics so that's what metrics looks like in the Prometheus world so in this case we have metrics from a MySQL exporter that I found on the internet uh, so you can see the number of commits that MySQL server has been doing uh, so basically you have a metric name and then you have uh, uh, another label which is the handler which tells you okay this is this is coming from MySQL global status and this is the total of handlers and this is the number for the commit handler so labels are used so that you know more precisely what your metrics are about and then you can decide to aggregate uh, by those labels so this is the metrics that are coming out from uh, the exporter themselves. Uh, so one metric with two different label, val label values. So you have under commit and then the value and temp write as another value. Behind the scenes, uh, the metric name is actually also uh, a label. So it's a special label in Prometheus called underscore underscore name. Uh, but on the display layer or when you are querying Prometheus you don't have to use it you can just write the metric name and Prometheus will know what you are speaking about but if that is what your exporter is exposing how do you know where it's coming from and that's where the targets label are important because uh, Prometheus will combine the metric labels with the target label so that uh, the MySQL exporter knows that uh, the metric is about the end of commit in the MySQL global status, for example. And Prometheus knows that, okay, I did ask those metrics to that specific MySQL instance located in the Paris data center. And so by combining those two, you have the end metric that you can query in Prometheus itself that combines both the label from the metric and the label from the targets and at the end you get a pretty long metric with a lot of labels <coughs> and you can query uh, any of those labels <coughs> so the targets labels where are they coming from uh, so prometheus uh, at its heart uh, is based on service discovery so uh, it is made so that if you are using a cloud provider if you are using uh, a software for your infrastructure like Kubernetes, <coughs> Prometheus will know about your targets. It is built in, you don't need to install anything. We support all the major cloud providers um, and a lot of other tools. But all those different service discoveries, they will tell you, okay, this is what you have in your inventory now, and it will dynamically change. So that if you add a new server, it will directly uh, go in Prometheus. For some of the integrations like Kubernetes, we maintain a constant connection with Kubernetes and directly when a pod is coming up, it will show up in Prometheus. Um, so uh, it is the same with console. So if you are using console, then there is not even a delay. We keep the connection open to console and then you have directly your service discovery. But uh, at the end, as Prometheus is not really opinionated on that regard, we do not tell you at a data center label for you. We do not decide that you are interested to aggregate your metrics by region or to alert by uh, any anything like that. So what we are doing instead is that 
we are providing you with a bunch of meta labels. Uh, so this is an example for OVH Cloud. Uh, and you can see just what we know about the host, what the API is giving us, the number of disks, the number of the display name of the machine, the memory limits, and a bunch of those meta labels. Probably you do not need them uh, in all your metrics uh, because like it's just what the API is providing us and we don't try to do any um, business logic in uh, upstream so we use what the API is giving us as is and you get all the labels that the API is providing to Prometheus so and if you want now to have a data center label then you will need to use the technique called relabeling so that's the logic behind Prometheus and why we need the relabeling because upstream we don't know what the users are doing with uh, the service recovery and not all the service recovery provide the same uh, label. So we have relabeling so that you can go from uh, one set of labels to another set of labels. So for example, you can change the value of the labels because maybe some exporters don't provide the correct information or maybe uh, you don't you want to um, merge different uh, cloud providers together and one cloud provider is calling the data center Paris one and the other one is calling it Paris uh, I don't know what the number but you want to have a uh, Europe region in your uh, labels so you can change uh, the labels you can add new labels with the relabeling so uh, you have three labels at the beginning but you want another one because uh, you will aggregate on, on the other one like the region example I gave you. Uh, you can also remove some labels because maybe you have too many labels in some metrics, you have too many labels when you are doing the alerting, that kind of things. You want to just remove some of the labels for simplicity. And you can also remove an entire label set, which means that you have a set of labels, but yeah, maybe you don't want to monitor the target. Maybe you don't want that metric, you can say, okay, with relabeling, I just remove the complete label set and I don't have any label after the relabeling phase. Because I did talk about targets, label, but relabeling in Prometheus happens in multiple places. So you have the service discovery, so when you are getting your targets, uh, you can say, okay, I want those different labels on my targets. When you are scraping metrics, you can say, yeah, I am not interested in that label or I want to drop that metric uh, so that you can uh, be more efficient on the script side and maybe not store all the metrics an application is producing. You have the remote write side, so that is when Prometheus will send the data to an external system like uh, Thanos Cortex. Uh, then you can say, okay, I don't want to send all the metrics, I want also to drop, so drop some of the metrics and not send them to the remote uh, side. And you can also do it in the alerting because uh, each one of the Prometheus server will have normally a uh, unique uh, external label set. But when you do the alerting, you want your manager to know, okay, this is the same alert coming from uh, the same Prometheus cluster and you want to smooth the alerts so that they look like they all come from the same Prometheus server. So relabeling is really about you take a label set Maybe it's from targets, from metrics, uh, or from the alerts, and then you will just change the label set with different relabeling actions. So we will look more into details into all of the actions that you can do with uh, Prometheus, and you will see if you have seen some Prometheus configuration. Maybe some of them will be familiar with you. So I will just explain each every one of them. The first relabeling action is the easiest and it's the default one, like you do not have to tell explicitly that it's a replacement because by default it's what Prometheus will do, it's a replacement. So you take, a uh, it is regex based, so you take a set of uh, input labels, <coughs> uh, for example the source label here is the data center label, so this is a label set that gets transformed into the other side. And you say, okay, that data center, I want it to be in the target label data center. So in this case, it is just one label uh, okay, that will be transformed into itself. But the regex is that, okay, if the label does not end with zero, and uh, zero to nine digits, then I want to replace it with a dash one. So if you have a data center Paris, 
it will be replaced with data center mm -hmm. Paris one. Uh, there is a couple of things to note in reliable injection is that the source labels is always a list, which means that if you provide multiple labels in the list, uh, Prometheus will join them, so you can specify how you want to join them, which is character you want to jump them. Uh, and the second thing is that uh, the regex, you do not need to ensure them, they are always ensured by Prometheus, which means that the regex is only ma uh, always match for the full string. That's why we have to to put the dot star at the beginning, the wildcard at the beginning, uh, and we don't need to do the dollar at the end because Prometheus always ensures the regex is in relabeling. And it means also that some of the label sets will not get changed. Like in this case, my data center is Paris 2. With the replacement, it does not match the regex, so it will just keep to be Paris 2. So that that is the <coughs> the main usage for the, uh, the, the the default action. You can also use it to create a new label. So if the target label does not exist, Prometheus will add the label, and you can then also use that to rename a label. So if you have a source label and a target label uh, which are different, uh, then Prometheus will just copy the value of the first one to the second one if it matches the regex, and the default regex matches uh, almost everything. Well, uh, matches everything. Another labeling action is the keep up action. So this is when you know that you only want to keep, for example, the instances with the data center Paris. Then you will say, okay, I want to keep the, the source labels, the data center, the regex Paris, and just keep everything that is Paris. And then all the rest will just be dropped. So if now I have a data center London, that will be uh, disappearing after the relabeling action. We have the opposite, which is the drop action. In this case, you say you want everything but Paris. So you can just say, okay, I will drop everything but Paris. So this is the action drop. Again, you need source labels and regex. Uh, and if it's actually, uh, if the source label does not match, so like London does not match Paris, then it will be kept instead of being uh, dropped. Then you have uh, some more cosmetic uh, actions like a lowercase, so because some cloud providers um, use uh, uppercase in their uh, APIs and it's not super convenient to work with uh, when you are mixing multiple cloud providers. You can decide to lowercase some of the labels and the same, uh, the opposite, the uppercase. So that's pretty straightforward. Then you have keep equal. So keep equal is for more advanced use cases. Uh, the idea is that we will compare the content of the source label and the target label. Uh, the concatenated source labels and the target label and if the value that we get is equal then we will keep the label set. So this is a very new feature uh, and for example if you are in Kubernetes and you have multiple ports uh, you can use that to tell Prometheus okay I want the, con the port with that name to uh, be kept, but maybe the name is not the same with all your deployments, so you want to add a special label in your port to say, okay, please use the web for Prometheus, the web port for Prometheus, then you can do this with keep equal. And the same way that you have, uh, so in this example, <coughs> you have um, a meta label called monitoring port, and it must be equal to the port name. So if we have a target which is exposing multiple ports and I can see that uh, I have the monitoring port which is web and the port name which is web, then I will keep that label set. Now, if the monitoring port is web uh, but the actual soft name is the RPC, then I will drop it. And in general, the first label will be the same for all the different ports of your target <coughs> and the second one will be specific for each port uh, this is a simplified example, of course, I didn't put the full uh, Kubernetes metric uh, meta label name, but this is the ID between keep equal and uh, drop equal, so drop equal being uh, exactly the opposite. So in this case, uh, I, I want to exclude the monitoring port, maybe to do some black box monitoring or stuff like that, so then I can use drop equal, which is the opposite 
then if the two label values are identical, uh, the label set will be dropped and the target will be dropped. Another relabeling action which is specific to when you want to do a horizontal sharding of your community server is uh, the hash mod function. So the hash mod function will keep, will take a bunch of source labels and it will compute a hash uh, which will be fixed for all the community servers. So all the community servers for the same input we compute the same hash and then in which in every Prometheus server um, you will define a second relabeling action to say okay I only want to keep that specific hash so in this case uh, my slide is bogus because a Motulus 2 cannot give you a hash of 2 uh, but imagine you have a modulus 4, you will get all the different addresses will be get a number between 0 and 4 uh, in another label and then you can decide in Prometheus, okay, I will only keep the, the addresses for, for which the hash is uh, 2 and if the hash ends up being something else than 2, I will just drop the, the the target. So this enables multiple point servers that do not communicate with each other to say, okay, I will only work on uh, a cluster of the uh, targets. Then you have label map. Uh, so you know, for example, in Kubernetes, you can assign labels to your uh, pods or your containers. And with label map, you can say, okay, all the labels that start with that specific name, I want to direct to uh, to add them as new labels. So in this case, uh, everything that starts with meta underscore tag will be replaced by what's its following meta tag. So meta tag team becomes team and meta, meta tag application becomes application. So that in, the, in that way, the labels will not be dropped at the end of the relabeling action They will be kept. Uh, in general, you should avoid doing that because it can quickly end up with a lot of many labels that you are not actually using. Uh, but I'm mentioning it because in some cases it might still be useful but in most of the cases you will lose a lot of uh, indexing space and, uh, and memory if you are using that action. The next one is label drops. So in this case you have uh, a lot of labels and you know some of them are not really useful. You can decide to, to just drop those labels. You have to be careful that at the end you only get one, uh, one result, one output, uh, one unique output for each metric. If you do that in the metrics area, otherwise you will get into issues, but uh, it can still be useful. So what it is doing is that it will take the regex and apply it to all the label names and every label name that match the regex will be dropped. The opposite again is the uh, label keep. So in this case, we will say, okay, please keep all the labels that match instance or data center. So in this case, it is dropping the tag team label. So there is a difference between target relabeling and uh, metric alert and remote right relabeling is that in the target relabeling at the very end, <coughs> we remove all the labels that start with two underscore. So all the meta labels are automatically removed. Uh, if you are doing that, if you have labels with two underscore exposed by your exporter, they will still be kept because that is in the metric relabeling and not in the target relabeling. There is another specificity of the target relabeling is that the target relabeling can be used to configure your targets. So the address that the Prometheus will talk to is a label, the metric path, so the slash matrix at the end of the HTTP address uh, is a label, the scheme, HTTP or HTTPS, uh, the HTTP par parameter, so if you need to pass an HTTP parameter to your target, you can configure it in Prometheus, but you can also pass it uh, as a meta label. And uh, at this here, you can also configure the script interval and the script timeout with labels. Uh, and interestingly enough, the instance and the job label that Prometheus itself is adding are not very special except that point is adding them. You can change them, you can remove them, you should not remove them, but uh, you can, for example, if you are using uh, an IP address, uh, you can change it to the host name using relabeling, that's fine, that will work. 
So let's look at an example of relabeling. So uh, we want to query for all the Apache V host defined in a Puppet DB and monitor them with a black box exporter. So you have your infrastructure defined in Puppet. Uh, Prometheus can talk to Puppet DB, and but we Puppet DB will not provide you with the full levels that are needed for black box monitoring. So uh, the black box exporter is it will query using HTTP, TCP, DNS, DNPC, and generate Prometheus metrics. And that's what you Prometheus need to ask to the black box exporter. So localhost 9.1.1.5, then it needs to slash probe, and then put HTTP parameters. Uh, the good news is that every part of it is dynamic in the sense that all of that is a label. So you have param target, param module, and then the metric part, the address, and the scheme that can be uh, used to uh, probe the target. So we start with just say, okay, the module will always be the same, the metric pass. It is not the default, but it will always be the same. So um, we can put that directly in the configuration. And then we have the Puppet DB query, just like, please, Puppet, give me all the Apache V holes that you know about. And then you can start the relabeling. So the first thing you can do is dropping every dot like local <coughs> host that you don't want to monitor them with a black box exporter. So as the first step, we drop all the dot local host. The second thing is okay. We have the server name, uh, but we need to put that into the target parameter of the black box exporter. So we have just source level and target level to just turn that into uh, source and target. Then we will take the instance level, which will also be the vhost name, uh, um, and so that uh, it will be easy to query for the uh, different vhost that I have because this will be the instance level. And then the target label, uh, the last label is the address because I want to monitor the local, uh, I want to talk to the local black box exporter and not to the actual vhost because, like, uh, the Puppet DB exporter will not give me the correct address I need to query. So the last thing in the URL that I want to change is the address and I want to put the black box exporter address. I can still do a uh, go a bit further and say, okay, um, if the source label is ending with com, uh, then I, ca I want to change the script interval to 30 seconds. So instead of uh, querying all the .com domains every uh, 10 seconds, I will query them every 30 seconds. And all of that in one single uh, job configuration. Another pattern that you can do is using temporary labels. So because the relabeling actions are executed one after each other, uh, and at the end we drop everything that starts with two different uh, two underscore, you can create new temporary labels and use them. So for example, if you want to keep the target that match uh, the center of New York tree and the region Europe, you could do that in a kind of regexy way, but uh, as the complexity grows, it becomes more difficult to read. Yet what you can do instead is use a temporary label. In this case, if the data center is New York tree, I want to have a team pick uh, label uh, with value one, which is in orange in the slide. And then you have another uh, action, which is like, okay, but now if the region is London, please write a temp keep label with one. So we have a second target, which has that temporary uh, label. And at the end you say, okay, please only keep the one that has the temporary keep label. So you are able, to, by using the temporary uh, Levels, you can actually like mark the target in multiple steps and at the end just say, okay, I want to only keep the target that match all the different conditions. So, uh, uh, another thing to note is that those, it's uh, the labels are not really special in the sense that if you are using the HTTP service discovery, the static discovery or the file uh, discovery, you can put the labels directly in those files. Like uh, if you want to set the script interval for just one host, but you, you can generate the file 
uh, SD because you are not using cloud provider so you have your own mechanism you can just put scrape interval in the labels of the targets directly and it will work just as well as in reliability so if you already generate those files you can also uh, do it like this another thing to note is that uh, the Prometheus configs in Prometheus they are not computed every time so even if you have 100 different steps in your reliability configuration which I have never seen in real life but maybe we will have um, Prometheus will only run that once for each target for example or, or for each metric and it will say okay the next time it will see the original uh, uh, metric hash it will say okay I know that I have already done the relabeling, so it will not do it again. So you don't have to be afraid of uh, preferring like to have uh, quite uh, that kind of patterns, which is multiple steps instead of one big regex that will be really hard to read. So uh, it is fine to use a different step because at the primitive side we have a lot of optimizations uh, to do that. It it also means that. Uh, it's also good if you get all the targets from your service discovery and you filter them at the Prometheus level uh, because then you will be able to reuse the same configuration for multiple step jobs uh, which is also optimized by Prometheus so for example if we have a Prometheus uh, configuration like this and the uh, SD configuration is exactly the same um, and exactly the same like at the YAML level for example uh, and Prometheus will only talk to the service query uh, only once. So, if you have a cloud provider like DigitalOcean, they have some uh, API uh, rate limits that you cannot uh, overpass. If you have uh, 20 different jobs, we when you try when you have different DigitalOcean configuration because you are filtering <coughs> the configuration with some filters, uh, then you will probably hit the limit. But if you have the same and you do the filtering in the reliable configs then Prometheus will do once the query to the cloud provider because it will say yeah I know the metrics from DigitalOcean I will get them for all the jobs and then every job will do its own relabeling configuration so you can lower the API call that you are doing to external resources so uh, last piece of advice so carefully choose your labels so uh, choose the labels by thinking how do I want to alert, how do I want to aggregate my metrics uh, don't try to plan to far ahead like okay uh, I have a data center and a region but maybe tomorrow I will have three data centers in four regions so I need to have a data center and a region level uh, don't try to plan too far ahead just try to have your point just matching your infrastructure don't add too many labels uh, the special label to determine uh, the configuration for script is something really nice so that you don't need a specific script configuration just for a couple of hosts that might be too slow you can also um, use reabling to start from a simple list of targets so if you have the black box exporter you can have just the host name in the list and then use the reabling to compute the black box exporter addresses for Prometheus which is really nice to return because you just need to focus on the list of the targets and you don't need the full list of labels and the full configuration of the black box exporter uh, I advise you to reuse the same service query exactly between scrap jobs if that's possible so you only query the cloud providers and the underlying APIs once uh, and the temporal labels is also a nice tip when you need to do advanced relabeling uh, just use them uh, in Prometheus we, we encourage users to use understand Docs or TMP uh, for those temporary labels uh, but basically uh, you can do anything you want but just uh, maybe we will once uh, once use another thing but slash slash tmp is reserved for that special use case we will not use it upstream and that's it uh, if there is any question the first one was a question gets a box of chocolates <laughs> if, if it's chocolate? a good question <laughs> Yes. So there is no performance impa impact really on relabeling because uh, most of the time uh, your your metric or your uh, your um, target will be the same uh, across the different uh, scripts. 
and committees will not really do the relabeling again. You say, okay, this is the label set, the relabeling configuration has not changed. So uh, I, I already know the, uh, the end result. So uh, there is no really uh, CPU uh, specific um, impact of the relabeling itself because uh, unless when there is a new metric, then it will do the relabeling again, but you will not see that very often. But in some cases, yeah, it's, it's sometimes better if you have a drop action to have it at the beginning so that you directly know that you don't deal with the label set again. So if you can move the drop level at the beginning and do the advanced stuff later on, that's still better in Yes? <coughs> Can you do any kind of down sampling with labeling? No, you cannot do down sampling with labeling, uh, which is an issue because, for example, uh, if you say, okay, I don't need do all those labels, I want to aggregate them, it is not possible. Uh, the only case where it's possible is with the histograms because then you can decide. So the histograms in Prometheus, you have a lot of buckets, but they are cumulative, so you can drop some of the buckets uh, because they it's the early bucket and you can say okay I don't want that many buckets so you can drop them but that's the only uh, case when you can really do kind of down sampling because all those histogram metrics are cumulative uh, but in the play in the normal metrics you cannot do down sampling using a uh, relabeling yes is there room for detection because since you can have actions on labels you created before Actually, you can create a loop. You cannot create a loop because they are executed one after each other. So the level set is uh, transformed uh, to the next step and the next step and the next step, but uh, it is not like... The labels that you add are processed at the end. Yeah, the labels that you add are available for the next relabeling action. Okay. So it's really like going to every action one after each other, but there is no loop. And if you try to refer a label that you had in another action later on, it will not work because it's really a list. It's a YAML list, so it's completely ordered and predictable. Okay, thank you.